Hey, Dr. Matt here. Today we're talking about how to break sugar addiction. I mean, how awesome would it be to be completely free from sugar addiction, to just living life having to consume lots of sugar? So why are we addicted to sugar in the first place? Sugar, sure it tastes good, but a lot of things taste good, right? I mean, steak tastes good, apples taste delicious, berries are delicious, peaches are delicious, eggs taste great, love eggs. But you know what? I have not come across a patient or myself um, at any point who went head over heels, powerless to stop you know, their food action you know, at four o'clock in the afternoon, eight o'clock at night, because of the apple they saw on the counter or the egg they saw hanging out in the refrigerator. However, I have an endless line of patients, clients, my own life speaking for itself, who see crackers, chips, uh, you know, milk chocolate, licorice, those red vines, you know, uh, white chocolate mochas, and immediately they fall into this trance, this, this addictive trance, completely in, encapsulated, you know, forgetting the covenant that they had made just yesterday or maybe even a couple hours earlier, uh, you know, stating with themselves that they are going to pass on these foods, they're going to free themselves from these sugar-laden pseudo-foods. The thing is, have you, have you, you know, remembered or thought about like the dessert you had at Thanksgiving? Was that brought to your memory? You know, the smiles and laughter that are um, at Easter time when uh, you or your children or you as a child indulged in those, you know, chocolate coated candies that were shaped like eggs um, or the ones that are, um, you know, chocolate on the outside and got like some kind of thing, gooey thing on the inside. Or say you finish your soccer game as a child and you are congratulated by your parents or other parents with a package cookie, um, a bar, a candy bar, soda pop, or how about when you would go on those trips with your family and you guys would always stop at that ice cream place um, or you'd always stop at that convenience store and get some, some little goodie. Or maybe, maybe it's after you won that game or, or many games and you, you would then get to hit up the candy shack or uh, you know go to Dairy Queen for blizzards for the team. Man, food nostalgia it is a huge reason why we're stuck in the rut that is sugar addiction. So you know, there's a lot of things coming against us here. We, we have so many memories, usually good memories, um, or even times when we were feeling bad um, and, and the thing that made us feel better was that sugar-laden food. And you know these times are directly associated with the the effect that junk food and desserts have on our being today and, and our addictive tendency towards them. You know we were just naive children. I was, um, and, and we had no clue that these foods, at least I had no clue, were making me more susceptible to disease, making me more susceptible to dysfunction. You know, taking me down this road that would make it harder for me to manifest health and vitality and vigor. And you know, these desserts, they're meant for special occasions, not everyday enjoyment, unfortunately. So if they happen every day, problems happen. You know, I am a part of the Sugar Addicts Club. I over, I'm one of those that have, that have overcome, but you know, I still gotta watch it. You know, I pounded so much sugar, I, so much packaged food. You know, it was like, I, w I thought they were the super highway to, to longevity because I was consuming them so much. But now, thankfully, via books and, and um, uh, learning and learning and learning, I know that, man, this battle is continual, but I'm overcoming, I, I'm raging against the beast, raging against the beast that is sugar addiction. And uh, I've been winning, I mean, literally, consistently for the last 20 years. And you can too. And so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna share with you two steps and four tips to uh, help you conquer sugar addiction right now, today, to get, to get on that road. And I'm, this is coming from personal experience of what, what can help and uh, you know, what, what, some things I've done in my own life to help myself. So step one is that 
we have to come to the understanding that added sugars and processed foods, we, we gotta understand that they literally are undermining our health, that they are not for our health benefit, for our, our, our longevity, for, for what we want. They're, they're literally, they're extracting life daily from our being. They're taking us down a path that we, in reality, do not want to go down. We do not want to participate in what these sugar-laden foods want us to participate in. Things such as needing to go to the doctor more often, um, having to use pharmaceutical drugs to, say, keep our blood sugar under control or our blood pressure under control or keep acid reflux at bay or um, you know the pains of arthritis because the sugar has been ravaging our limbic ligaments and tendons and synovial fluid. You know, having cognitive decline, you know, way too young, way before our time. You know, this is the fruit. These are the fruits of a life consistently inundated with added sugars. And I don't think anybody is, any of us want to participate in that kind of life, right? You know, one time, I've told this story so many times, that one time I had a patient who lost 14 pounds in one month. One month by doing nothing else except for this one thing deleting white chocolate mochas from her morning routine. That one thing. Literally dropping that cup of inflammation transformed her existence. I mean, 14 pounds, boom, gone, see ya. Out of here. And her health, her health trajectory, it'll never be the same. By just deleting that one item. Overcoming that one daily routine. All right, cool. So step number two, you gotta go all in. We got to go all in. We're talking about an addiction. And addictions, no patty cake. You know, study after study proves it. My own battle with sugar proves it. You know, leaving broccoli on the table, a chips a whole cookie on the table. What do you think? I mean, what is the thing that's gonna talk back to you? What's gonna be louder? The broccoli, the chips a whole cookie? The chips a whole cookie, the cake. You know, that croissant sitting over there. You know, we, we can't play patty cake with addiction. And sugar is addictive. You know, we, we really, we just got to drop the hammer. We got to go 180 degrees the opposite direction and get the results we want. The thing is, you won't overcome processed food addiction by going halfway in, by just eating a little bit here and there, by having that donut on Sundays. They literally, you know, they have, they have biochemists, these, these big old food companies, pseudo food companies have biochemists that are getting paid millions of dollars to figure out how to get you and me to take one more bite, to eat one more chip, to buy one more bag, to, to hide one more bag of, of or, or box of cookies in, in our cupboard. You know, that your willpower, my willpower, it's going to run out. The, the more we consume, the more, the more we, we, we get hooked in the sicker we become. And the more pseudo food will say, hey, it's, the, it's, the, it's going to declare, you need me, you need me for survival. You need me cookies, I, I need, these chips say, I, you need me. You know, they're, they are, the engineering of junk food, it literally is purely for addictive tendencies. It's not for nutrition, it's for addiction because addiction creates money for these guys. I know it sounds evil because it is evil, it's very evil. So do we want to participate? Do we want to support that kind of evil? You know, nutrition is nowhere on the list for these companies. You know, they are literally figuring out ways. How can we, you know, make this thing, this, this newest addictive masterpiece, how can we, we make it more addictive? You know, even when you see, all, you know, you'll see all these health marketing words, but that's all they are. They're health marketing words. They're plastered, plastered all over the packaging. It's all for show to get one more indulgence by you. Just one more time. That noose just gets a little bit tighter each time. You know, life, health, vitality, vigor, freedom, it gets just a little bit farther away from us as that noose gets a little bit tighter. So I'm all in. It's not in my house, it's not in my car, it's not in my drawer, it's not in my office. I am all in. You gotta go well in too. Okay, so now that we recognize that pseudo foods and sugar bombs are not to our benefit, number one, that was, that was step number one. And now that we've decided to go all in, that we're, we're gonna straight up gonna overcome this thing. We're, we're going to go 100% in, in 
bypassing this addictive behavior and create a new life ourselves. Those two steps, they gotta be in line before we move on these tips. So what can we, can we do to help ourselves on the daily? To make it just a little bit easier, right? <laughs> to stick to the plan because we have to eat. That is, that is the problem. We have to eat to survive. And if we don't eat food, we're going to be dead. So tip number one, the thing I would do is to increase your protein intake. When you're going to bypass sugar addiction, get that protein intake up. You know, anywhere from 20 to, to 50 grams per day of increase over the first few months when you're taking full control of the reins of your, your health here. And this might feel like way too much food initially, but the feeling you know, uh, of being full and abundantly satisfied, it really is key when we're talking about dominating the addiction that is the, the sugar monster. And you know, protein, it, it perks up our dopamine production with, without increasing appetite, and, and this is key. If you can get dopamine, that get that reward signal up, just like happens with crackers, chips, candy, cookies, soda pop, all that, you get that reward signal up, but you don't increase appetite. You, you actually suppress appetite with that protein, which is the complete opposite that those pseudo foods do. So the, uh, the desire doesn't come. You know, you just, you just get the reward. Increase your reward response plus increase immediate desire for more food. You know, that, that is a recipe for health disaster. That is a recipe for obesity, diabetes, stroke, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, you name it. And that's what the pseudo foods do. So we gotta pump the protein so that we can increase that dopamine response, a reward response, but not increase the appetite response and the need for more food. All right, so tip number two, I would strongly consider adding more salt to your food routine. Even if this is for a couple months, you know, shake it on all your food. Make it so you're like, oh, that's almost like too salty. Cause salt is highly satisfying, but it's, it's also zero calories. And it is a necessity for life, for cell to cell communi communication. If you don't have salt, your cells can't communicate well at all. And uh, you know, salt is often shunned, but um, you know, sugar, because it is addictive in a way, but it's sugar, you know, it is the addiction that leads to massive health detriment. So even though salt um, is highly addictive, as it does raise um, dopamine levels, it raises um, cannabinoid activity, um, it raises endogenous opioid receptors, you know, you know it increases the response in our body on the cannabinoid level, the endogenous um, opioid level. Uh, however, you know, the body has this strong natural sense for, for salt and what to do with it and um, when, it, when it's sufficient. And it will naturally turn off that desire for salt when the body's satisfied. It will not do that for sure because these biochemists know how to bypass that. I know it's crazy, it's evil. So um, get the salt in you. So protein, salt, tip number three, hydration. First thing in the morning, like we always talk about, then all day long. And that can be water, can be carbonated water, uh, mineral water, you know, herbal teas. All these, these work great for hydration. And you've probably heard it said before, but you know, it's not, you're not hungry, you're thirsty, right? And the deal is our hypothalamus up here in the brain, it's responsible for that thirst sensation. But our, our hypothalamus is also responsible for our hunger response. You know, this is why it's often suggested that desire, the desire for food is not real. You know, that, that desire you have for food isn't really real. You know, go drink a glass of water first. You know, it could, actually because our body can get crossed up, our, our, our mind can get crossed up. Our, 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 our needs can get crossed up. And that, that desire for food may actually be a lack of hydration. We're actually thirsty. That's what we need. We need some water. Our body's like, I need some hydration. I need some, I need some blood volume here. So don't make the mistake of, of walking through your day dehydrated because you're, you're literally crippling your willpower. You're making it so much harder for you to sustain a lifestyle free of sugar addiction by walking around dehydrated all day long. So don't open that door, keep that door shut um, on sugar addiction by hydrating first thing and keep it going all day long. All right, tip number four, you know exercise is my favorite thing. We're not gonna get through a video without talking about exercise. Uh, so we gotta get exercise, we gotta get our body moving. You know, a, a, a body that is not in motion is stagnant, it's weak, and guess what? Stagnation and weakness leaves, leaves us to be so susceptible, such easy prey for those multi-billion dollar pseudo food entities to get us when we're down, get us when we're weak. 
you know, we're not feeling good about ourselves. So how about instead we become titans by, by regularly putting, you know, that, that reward armor on that is physical activity, that is exertion, that is exercise, you know, get that serious sweat session going on, uh, you know, that panting, asking for air, you know, get our muscles burning, get those veins popping, you know, out everywhere, our arms, chest, back, legs, because our body is, you know, just pumping blood to the surface to get rid of that heat from our exercise. And it was trying to, you know, send massive nourishment to our muscles because literally exercise is a weapon and we need weapons that work. So you, you load up, you know, when you're exercising, you're loading your body up with arrows of serotonin production of dopamine activity of endorphins and and you're basically making yourself ready to you know fire away at, at sugar addiction every single day you're ready for battle when you when you get that consistent exercise going on a daily basis you are ready for battle all right that's four tips so if you're watching this video anytime after say like 1970 1971 you've likely been subjected to sugar overreaching in your life right kind of like government, like right now, um, 2021, I'm making this video. There's a whole lot of government overreaching and it is, it doesn't feel good at all. There's nothing funny, but fun about it. It's not funny. It's not enjoyable. It's not life giving. Uh, you just want to like get off me. And you probably have the same sensation, the same sensation when it comes to sugar. So we want health freedom, right? And if we continually eat these pseudo foods, our health freedom is, is slowly but surely, little by little, eroding away. And we're gonna be forced to use the system. That's not acceptable, right? We don't wanna be subject to the system. We wanna be subject to health freedom. So let's take these steps, two steps, four tips, and put sugar addiction out of here. Over the next three months, it is totally doable. Go all in. Let me know how you did it. I'm Dr. Matt. Thank you so much for watching. And get this life-saving health inspiration to your friends, to your family. Subscribe, share, share again. Get them, get them. They, they got to watch this stuff. They got to hear this stuff over and over and over again. So people can get the confidence to know that they truly can do it. You can do it. I did it. You can do it too.